am going to need this and these because somehow I am getting a go in that. You may recognise these guys from our M5 videos. Dara and the guys from Everything M are now tapping into their F1 and endurance racing knowledge and have decided to start prepping legendary racing cars. Not a bad pivot at all. Today is the first shakedown of this 1989 Porsche 962. As a Jag man, this thing is technically the enemy. Porsche were so dominant in the 1980s, constantly crushing my beloved TWR silk cut Jags. Just that combination of numbers, 962, gives me the shivers a little. But when an opportunity like this comes knocking, you say yes. The Porsche 962 is one of the all-time great racing cars. You have to mention it in the same breath as the Lotus 49 and the Audi Quattro. It is that legendary. It reigned the world of endurance for the vast majority of the 1980s. A twin-turbo flat six, a synchro mesh five-speed gearbox, pioneering ground effect bodywork, anywhere from 600 to 800 brake horsepower, and a top speed of 240 miles an hour in the long-tailed versions. Also, you'll often hear the 962 mentioned alongside the 956. What's the difference there then? Well, they are almost the same car. The 956 came first, but then regulation changes specifically from the American endurance racing organization, IMSA, forced Porsche to put the pedals behind the front axle line for safety reasons. That meant they had to elongate the tub a touch and this modified US spec was named the 962. So the 962 is basically a 956, but your ankles aren't the crumple zone anymore. Another cool fact, the rear lights are from an Austin Metro. Dara, the last time we saw you, we were mucking about with a V10 M5. What the hell is going on? <laughs> uh, it's escalated. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we were sort of given a golden opportunity to rebuild this, prep it for Spa and, and Le Mans this year. So, um, you know, it's back to the roots of sort of what we know of building race cars and prepping cars, so. Well, that's it. Well, judging by your overalls here, XF1, X Le Mans, this is your wheelhouse. Yes. So the goal for today, this is the first shakedown of the car. You've been working on it in your workshop. First time the car's moved. Yeah. How's it been so far? You've been up and down this morning. It's great. Yeah? Yeah, it's great. It's, uh, Sounds amazing, it feels amazing to get, it's quick. Um, yeah, we're, we're just sort of gently, gently sort of getting it shaken down um, to get it back to, to go over everything again when, when we're back in the workshop. And everything looks brand new. How much work has gone into this car? I mean, pretty much everything by the engine has been off the car, really. Wow. So to qualify for this championship, all the suspension has to be crack tested. Yeah. We've ended up, you know, doing all sorts, you know, there's, there's new calipers that have gone on, there's, there's new brakes, there's wishbones, there's uprights that have been uh, repaired, uh, the gearbox has been rebuilt, brand new fuel system, so the bag tank, all the pumps, all the lines, all the brake lines, yeah, ev everything really. It's been a, a full on strip back and rebuild. And then once you're happy with it and you've done all your shakedown, you're handing it over to me. How the hell have you convinced the owner to allow that to happen? <laughs> He's a very, very nice man. He's a very nice man. He's just big <laughs> camera there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, go steady. I shall. <laughs> as steady as you can go in a Porsche 916. Yeah, course. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Thank don't... you so much, Dara. That's all right. I'll say thanks to, uh, yes. to our man over there. Thank you. <laughs> Before I get behind the wheel, let me give you the full geek, nerd, weirdo tour of this car. It is a 962 from 1988 to 89, and it is in what you could call short tail form because it's not got that big expanse of bodywork at the back like the long tail cars have, the Le Mans winners. Instead, it's got this much taller rear wing to maximize downforce in conjunction with the big two Venturi tunnels at the back. A couple of things that make this car unique, this cutaway at the front, all other 962s don't have that. And then back here, 
there's a 3.2 litre flat six instead of the normal three litre. What made the 962 so savagely good was a combination of three things. Reliability, drivability, and pioneering aerodynamics. Those first two kind of come hand in hand. By Porsche making this car easy enough for any Porsche customer to come in and drive, all of the inputs could be nice and smooth, and therefore the forces going through all the components were much smaller, and they'd last longer compared to their opponents. The synchro mesh gearbox, I think, is the nicest touch compared to its rivals like the Silk Cut Jags that had dog boxes where you really have to commit to a gear change. There's also a dial inside for turbo boost so you can turn it up or turn it down depending on track conditions, where you are in the race and also your driving ability. And it has steel brakes that warm up nice and quickly. This thing is a dream for an endurance racing driver. By the middle of the Group C era, it may not have been the quickest car over one lap, but it was a car that could just pound round a circuit for lap after lap, still at scintillating speed, but making sure to cover the full race distance way more often than its rivals. To finish first, first you have to finish. The fluid dynamics, the aero of this car is what really set it apart when it first came on the scene. The 956 was the first endurance racer to properly exploit ground effect technology to its maximum potential. The earlier cars from Group 5 and early Group C used elements of ground effects, but nothing brought the package together like the Porsche 956. If you think how small Formula One cars were at the time, they used ground effect, but compared to this, Norbert Singer and his engineers could really use all of that bodywork, maximizing every bit of surface area to increase downforce, using the air running over the car, but especially using the air running underneath the car. From 1982, when the 956 first came on the scene, through to the mid 80s, when the 962 took over, this thing was an unbeatable package. The 962 did have weaknesses though. The early cars had aluminium chassis, which meant they flexed quite a bit compared to their carbon fiber rivals, meaning they could get outhandled in the corners. The flat engine meant that the space for the Venturi tunnels underneath was hindered compared to those running V8s and V12s. Sometimes those engines overheated, and like all Group C cars, gearboxes were always quite fragile during a full 24 hours of racing. The 962 eventually got outdeveloped by the TWR Jaguars, and outhorsepowered by Sauber. But no other 1980s race car could match the breadth of performance and longevity of one of these. I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm quite anxious. This is an amazing moment and I really want to enjoy it, but this is a serious piece of kit. My default, the way I've been brought up, is if someone has done this nice a job with something, you're very careful with it and you, you know, very, very smooth with it. But at the same time, this is a Porsche 962. It's a race car. It is designed to be driven under full throttle. So I can't mess about. Yeah, it's, um, I've definitely got a bit of anxiety welling up in there, but let's just get on with it. Okay, so that's what a Group C flat six sounds like when it's right behind your back. I'm waiting for a wave. Okay. Despite all of my chit chat about the 962 having nice, easy synchros, it turned out that the car's clutch slave cylinder had slowly been on its way out throughout the day, so shifting was becoming harder and harder. By the time I got in the car, the slave cylinder was barely functioning, so changing gear was actually very tricky, 
as you're about to see. The throttle is incredibly heavy. Here we go. Holy crap! Struggling for a gear. Let's try and get second gear this time. Yes! I'm done! Here comes third! Yes! Oh my god, what the car! What are the brakes? The brakes are phenomenal! Darrow was struggling with the gearbox a bit as it got hot, and I think that's what I'm experiencing now, even with that synchro mesh. Aside from all the high-pitched screaming, what was this 962 actually like to drive? Well, I've never felt boost like it. Those twin turbos create this enormous, swollen dollop of power, which actually takes a good amount of throttle to unearth. The throttle itself is long and heavy, another comfort blanket that gives you plenty of thinking time as to how much welly you want to give it. Above 3000 RPM, it sends you down the runway relentlessly quick, with the feeling of speed amplified by the tarmac seemingly getting ever aggressively hoovered under the short nose of the car that falls away right in front of you. Driving down a runway is never going to tell you much about the handling of a car, but a small twitch at the steering wheel sends the nose darting in an incredibly direct manner without a micron of slag. Driving this car at Spa or Le Mans with 20 other Group C cars on track almost seems like pure insanity. Right, this might be my final time. Guys, not great on the gear shift. Although I gather that's been a problem all day with the linkage, even with that synchro mesh. Wow, what a thing! I don't know what to say. I think I might cry. Un unbelievable. The gearbox was trickier than I thought it was going to be. Um, but as I say, Darrell was kind of struggling with it as the day went on. I think as the car got hot, it was just really tough to change. But wow, th this is, this is going to be an experience I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. My first time driving a Group C car. If any of you guys have been following my journey on Drive Tribe, you have to go back to, I think, 2019, my first ever video on the YouTube channel and it was me walking around a Jaguar XJR9, the arch rival to this. So to now move on, what's that, four years? And I'm now driving a 962. Up and down the wrong way, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you so much for subscribing, getting the numbers that we get and allowing us to do stuff like this. Absolutely phenomenal. What a car. I'll admit, I get to do some pretty amazing, incredibly silly things in my day-to-day -day job, but I absolutely do not take for granted the fact that I've just driven this car. Arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, endurance racing car ever. 
I didn't really get into Le Mans until I was in my late teens, the start of university, because I'd just never come across these cars before. I'd never been exposed to them. But since then, I have become obsessed. They are, in my opinion, greater pieces of engineering as some of the F1 cars out there. If you are one of those people that's heard of Le Mans, seen the odd thing, but has never really given it a chance, I hope today's video has got you thinking about just, you know, having the old Google and having a look at Group C cars is a very, very good place to start. These things are phenomenal, and personally, I don't think there's been anything that's topped them since. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe. I'm going to sleep very well tonight.